There's this thought of cocktails being a retro thing, being something very much from the past, very much of having a heyday in either the 1890s or the, or the immediate post-prohibition era. But there's also the sense of now cocktails are embracing the past in a way they never have before, but also moving forward. And could you talk about that a little bit? Sure. I, I, I fully agree with that. I mean, it is, it is the first American, wholly American culinary art. Um, you know, we invented it. The Americas invented this. And um, I, I think what's, what's really cool is that at the Varnish, we're, you know, we're old salts. We, we, we prescribe to, to, you know, to old recipes. And I guess sometimes I say we're kind of like the Shakespeare of cocktails. And then, but, but hold on, but what's really important to me is, is process. And that's why, like, when I worked with Vincenzo, when we, we did the Doheny program together, I mean, his, his, his programs are a bit more progressive. Like, we're not, we're, we don't even bring, we don't bring in sage. We're not using basil in our cocktails. Um, we're using ingredients and, and specs that they had back in the day. And, of course, we modify them to the glassware we use. But, really, they're classic, old classic cocktails. We'll do teeny little spins on them here and there. But, um... You know, something, what, what's really lovely, what I see now is that people are prescribing to a, 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 a process, um, to, uh, to form in making cocktails. And, um, and to me, that's my beef with most bars that I go to. If, if, if they don't have a sense of process, if they're classic, if they're progressive, if they're a sports bar, if they're a beer and shot bar, as long as they have a sense of what they want to be. And I think that's happening more often now. I think the most beautiful thing I've ever heard you say is that you know, ice is to a bartender what flame is to a chef. Yeah. And I think that may really be true. Yeah. Because um, once you introduce ice to the liquid, it changes. Yeah. Just like once you introduce the flame to the, what you're preparing, it changes. So, so, uh, so said, there's, there's a sense in a, lot of, in, in a lot of your bars, and I've heard it said that uh, cocktails are really to beverages what jazz is to music. The first, as he was saying, the first really, truly, purely American form. Has that informed what you've been doing at all? Um, I think definitely. I mean, they say that, um, yeah, that it was our first signature cuisine cocktails. And um, I think, for me, restoring part of Los Angeles, I feel like I'm part of that process mm -hmm. in downtown. And at the same time, bringing back great classic cocktails and, and helping create a culture of amazing bartenders like these guys um, simultaneously has like been a, a really amazing experience. Um, yeah, I think it's a special time in LA. Thanks. And, I'll, and Michael, I'll, I'll leave you with the last word, since I think that a lot of what we're talking about is the intersection of cocktails and cuisine. Um, if you were, what, what magic do cocktails have? What, um, what magic does your cooking have and where do you think it intersects? How would you cook a dish to make a cocktail sing and how would a cocktail make your dish sing? Well, I mean, I, th I think, um you know, there, there are ways to more directly link food sometimes with, mm -hmm. with um, cocktails um, or distilled spirits than there are with, uh, with wine. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, wine has, um, I mean, obviously, you know, uh, you know, wine and food, they clearly have a great affinity for each other and, and no one would ever deny that. But again, um, you know, wine comes out of a bottle as it was made, whenever it was made. Right. And, um, and a cocktail is something that can be modified and adjusted to be specifically, um, you know, uh, calibrated for a certain dish, or you know, to be served at a certain temperature with a with a certain item, and and I think that's what's really amazing about it. It's just more dynamic because there's there's, you know, a lot more immediate, um, you know, ability for the bartender to change what it is that he wants to do. Mm -hmm. As a sommelier, he's only got what's in the bottle. Great. Right. More variation. Yeah. And uh, I mean, Vincenzo proved to me that mm -hmm. how just how dynamic that stuff can be because, mm -hmm. you know, and even. Uh, you know, that cocktail that I had earlier, mm -hmm. a gin cocktail that, that, that you had made that, you know, I hate gin. And mm -hmm. I could clearly taste the gin in this cocktail, but I loved it. So, I mean, to me, that's, that's pretty, you know, it's pretty brilliant. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but as for, you know, food and, and uh, cocktails, I mean, um, you know, Vincenzo really uh, taught me the gospel when it comes to that. And, and, I, and um, you know, it's something that I still turn to all the time.